Welcome to 6-Minute Statistics, where I tackle one topic at a time in simple and straightforward language, and I do it all in about six minutes. Today's topic, some simple descriptive tools for determining whether data that you have are normally distributed or not. I'm going to give you four techniques that will allow you to determine whether the data you have can be described using the normal distribution. Are you ready to get started? Let's go. Give me six minutes and I'll teach you something new. Now, let's get to work. Hello again, Mark here from Six Minute Statistics and I wanna to start today with a big disclaimer. There are a ton, a ton of ways to determine whether data are normally distributed or not. What I wanna cover in this video are four simple descriptive techniques you can use. You know my motto, keep it simple, student. You can search for more sophisticated techniques if you want, but these four simple techniques do a surprisingly good job. Are you ready to get started? All right, let's go. Number one, descriptive plots. What do I mean by that? Remember the good old days? The good old days when we were looking at histograms and stem and leaf displays? Turns out those are some pretty useful tools for determining if data are normally distributed or not. What you should do is get your data set and use a software package to create either a histogram and or a stem and leaf display and take a look. Does it exhibit that classic bell-shaped curve that are indicative of normal curves? That's it, simple, right? All right, ready for number two? It's something I'm gonna call an empirical analysis. Empirical, remember the empirical rule, right? Earlier, we took a look at something called the empirical rule that was appropriate to use when working with mound-shaped symmetric data. Our really sneaky way of saying normal distribution. That's right. The empirical rule is our first look or baby step, if you will, into the normal curve. What the empirical rule said is that approximately 68% of the data fell within one standard deviation of the mean. Approximately 95% fell within two and approximately 100% fell within three. We're gonna use that to our advantage now. We're gonna use a software program to take a look at the data we're working with and calculate a value of the mean and the standard deviation. Using those values, we're gonna create the X bar plus or minus one standard deviation, X bar plus or minus two standard deviations, and X bar plus or minus three standard deviations. The next step, which is a little bit time consuming, we're gonna count how many of our data set observations fall in each of those three intervals. And then we're gonna express it as a percentage of the data. What we're looking for are the percentage of our data set values that fall within one, two, and three standard deviations and see how closely or not so closely they match the empirical rule 68, 95, 100% values. Pay particular attention to that one standard deviation 68% number. Even skewed distributions typically give us around 95% and 100 in the second and the third. So make sure all three of those numbers are pretty close to the 68, 95, and 100. If they match pretty closely, there's a decent chance you're working with a normal curve. Simple, right? Turns out that one's a little time consuming, but it's still simple in idea at least. All right, on to number three. In this technique, we calculate a value of the IQR divided by S and see how close it is to 1.3 ish. The IQR is a value that you can probably find on a printout. It's the inner quartile range and it's the difference between the upper and the lower quartile or more simply put the 75th and the 25th percentile. So the difference between those percentiles divided by the standard deviation. 1.3 is this weird number that is characteristic of normal curves. And so by looking at these numbers that we see on the printout and doing some simple calculations, simple being the key word, we get another method of determining whether our data is normally distributed. Which brings us to, drum roll please, number four, the normal probability plot. Back in the day, these plots were a pain in the neck to draw. I still have nightmares about pulling out the logarithmic graph paper and drawing normal probability plots. Good news for you is that today, again, the operative word of the day, it's simple. You point and click your way to creating what's called a normal probability plot. Interpreting these plots is fairly straightforward as well. The straighter the plot, the more normal the data. So how straight is straight? That's a good question. And that's one of the challenges with the normal probability plots. But I promised you four, and I gave you four simple techniques to determine whether your data set is normal or not. The descriptive plots, the empirical analysis, 
the IQR divided by S value, and the normal probability plot. Logical question is, which one's best? And the answer is, there isn't a best one. Typically what I would recommend is doing two or more of them in conjunction with one another and try to come up with a consensus as to whether your data is normal or not. And that's it. That's all there is to assessing the normality. Now, as I mentioned before, there are some more sophisticated techniques. If you want to do a Google search for assessing normality, you're going to find a whole host of opportunities. But these four techniques, while simple, they do a pretty good job of determining whether data is normal or not. And when you get those results you're looking for, how about you coming back and liking my videos or maybe even subscribing to my YouTube channel. I'd like to continue doing this and that encouragement is probably going to help me do it. So with that, it's time for you, my statistics friends, to get to work. So long.